Hello and welcome again to the third and final session of this year's first uh, Digital Humanities in Early Music Research Workshop. Uh, we are very happy that uh, the fact that it's Friday afternoon in Europe and Friday in general uh, hasn't kept you from visiting our virtual room. And uh, today we will have um, another OMR capable editor uh, designed for processing uh, medieval manuscripts uh, presented uh, by uh, Alexander Hartelt from the Corpus Monodicum project. And a little bit will be presented by myself. I hope that uh, you will take take home some insights about whether to use this tool for yourself. And especially I hope that uh, you will participate uh, in the discussion, which is planned uh, towards the end of the session. So after the presentation of OMMR for all ends, uh, there will be some time to just talk about what you've seen so far, uh, request features because you have the developers or project bosses here uh, for both of the OMR pipelines that will be presented. And uh, we hope that uh, this workshop will also be helpful for directing further development of these tools. So do not be afraid to speak up and say what you want. So, without further ado, Alex, it's yours. Um. Hello and welcome to my presentation. Um, my name is Alexander Hartelt, as Jan has already told you. And um, my part of this presentation today is to tell you about OMMR for all, a tool which can be used to transcribe semi automatically or even completely manually media music notation. The tool was designed at the Chair of Artificial Intelligence and Applied Computer Science at the University of Pittsburgh. And it was part of the doctoral thesis of Christoph Wick. Currently, I'm the maintainer and developer behind OMR for all. And as Jan has, has already told you, I'm also part of the Corporate Monotone Project. So to give you an overview of our today's presentation, I divided the presentation into two parts. First of all, I want to give some small information about the general ideas of OMR for all. This includes especially um, the motivation behind it, some design ideas of OM, OMR for all, and also on what document types it can be applied on. And in the second part of the presentation, I will um, show you the user interface of OMR for all. You, uh, you will see the pipeline of OMR for all, and you can see how you can use the tools included into OMR for all to uh, transcribe um, documents which are written in shunt music. So um, starting with the presentation, you can see on this slide the problem setting of uh, OMR for all. As you can see on the left side, uh, the general input to our pipeline is an historical musical document, a scan of it. And as you can see, we currently focus on um, chant music, and the aim is to convert it to a more digitized data structure. As you can see in the middle, in the middle, you can see our software uh, intern data structure called PTGTS, but you also will be able to convert uh, this data structure to a more common data structure like MoDB Plus or MEI. A little bit more specific, we currently focus in the project um, on notations which are written in Gothic or square notation. And in order to convert those documents to such a digitized data structure, we have to extract several information. This includes especially the melody, um, including the location of uh, the music regions, and we also uh, extract the new type. Uh, in addition, we also extract lyrics, which also includes the position of the lyrics on those documents, and also the transcription of the text and the civil connections to the respective node. And optionally, we also give the user the option in OMR for all to extract the paratext on those documents. And we have some tools which you can also use to insert comments into the document for the symbols and also for the lyrics, which you can then use later, for example, to discuss on some issues uh, when you transcribe the documents. So on this slide, you can see the motivation of OMR for all. And as you can see, it is designed in a semi-supervised workflow. Um, 
This is because we have a set of tools which work completely, completely automatically. So um, you can use those tools to completely automatically transcribe your documents. But those tools which we use aren't error free. So you still have to do some um, correction on those documents or at least on the transcription of those documents. And those tools uh, which you can um, use to correct them are also included into OMR for all. And since uh, we have everything included, we call this an semi-supervised workflow. Also, it is designed to be as comprehensible as possible, which means even non-expert users can take full advantage of the tool. And this is also possible because, um, for example, to extract the melody uh, using this tool, you don't need uh, to be um, an expert in the field. You just have to locate the symbols on the document and the melody is then extracted automatically through OMR for all. Um, also, we designed it as a web location because as I've already mentioned, we have some tools which um, detect the um, transcription automatically. And those tools often need a high processing uh, CPU and um, uh, use a lot of workload. And these um, tools are then run on the server. And we just use the client to display the results which were calculated on the server. Uh, because we have a web application, or there's also no install needed, so the user can just um, enter the URL in his browser and can start transcribing the tool using uh, our tool. Also integrated into OMR for all, we have some kind of user management and also project management, uh, which we will see later. Um, so of course you can log in into, the, into OMR for all. If you are logged in, you have to access to more advanced features and also uh, you can create your own projects. And in addition to that, you can invite other users to your project so they can, for example, help you in annotating. Um, the pages of your project, uh, of your book. In our pipeline, we have several um, tools and we have also included several exist existing open source tools in our pipeline. For example, Ocrotos for the binarization step or Calamari for the optical character recognition. And in addition to that, we also designed several new algorithms which are also included in OMR for all. And most of those algorithms are specific to the music context. So for example, we have an algorithm to detect the staff lines automatically and an algorithm to detect the symbol detection of, um, of the document. Another important feature uh, of OMR for all is our iterative training approach. So as I've told, we have many tools which work completely automatically. Those tools need to be trained on because they use neural networks or, or in the background. Um, the neural networks normally work really good on pages they were trained on, on pages they weren't trained on, or if the notation uh, differs uh, really much, then they can perform bad. And in order to fix this problem, we integrated our iterative training approach into OMR, OMR for all. So you can annotate some pages completely manually using our editor tools, and then you can use those pages to train your own models. And those new models can then help you in transcribing the rest um, of your book, for example. And yes, this um, iterative training approach is integrated into OMR for all, which you will at least see a little bit later. So now we can also switch to the live presentation of OMR for all, where you will see the user interface. And as you can see here, we have two URLs, um, which I will also put into the um, Zoom client, so you don't have to type it all all out. Um, let me see if I can find the Zoom client as uh, a chat box. Yeah. So, so, so um, uh, if you want to follow the presentation, you can just do it on the tool because the next couple of slides are all taken directly from the tool itself. So if you want to try the features on your own, you can use this doing um, this tool. And of course, after the presentation has ended, the tool will be still available. So you, if you want to try it a little bit more after the presentation, you can uh, still uh, try a little bit more. So um, if you input the URL into your browser, you will see the landing page of OMR for all. Um, as you can see on the left, uh, on the top of the page, we have several icons or several buttons. All of those buttons have different functionalities. And if you are lost uh, 
while I'm presenting all of the fu those functionalities, you can always press on the top left button to return to the landing page. And from there, you can again start following the slides. As I've mentioned, we have some user management. If you are logged in as a user, you have access to more towards features. So for example, if you're logged in, you can use our iterative training approach, which I mentioned earlier. You can um, save the progress of your transcriptions and you can also uh, create new projects. If you aren't logged in, you can still um, uh, try the functionalities of OMR for all, you will, you, uh, but you won't be able to create your own projects and you can't save the progress of the annotation you did. Um, in addition to that, you can see here um, a GitHub repository link. If you click on this, you will see all the files which are related to OMR for all. This includes especially um, all the instructions which can be used to set up an own OMR for all instance. So if you want to set up your own instance, you can use this using our instructions. And we have instructions for Docker and also for a GitHub runner. In addition to that, in the repository, we have also some data sets. And those data sets were used to train our models, which ship on default um, with uh, OMR for all. And in addition to that, those data sets were all transcribed using this tool. So if you want to see some sample data, you can see this also using um, this link here on the top right. Um, also located here on the landing page is the settings button. And the settings button is uh, the location where you can set up global settings to this OMR for all instance. So as you can see here, if you press on it, you will see the global settings. And as you can see, we currently have thorough layout registered into our instance. And as you can see on the right side, we currently use different models for different um, layout types. So uh, as you can see, for the F14 layout, we use um, the default model for the F14 layout. And for the Gothic layout, we use a different model for the start and detection. So this can be set up here. And in addition to that, you can also insert or get the new notation styles here. And also um, on the tasks panel, if you click on this, I think you can only see this if you are an admin of the site, you can um, see all of the tasks which are currently running on the server. So if there is a task which is stuck, you are able to cancel it there. Um, if you click on the bus, uh, on the books button on the top left, you will see all of the project related um, or of your account related projects. And um, depending on the user account, you see a different set of projects, of course. Um, yeah, and this is also the location where you can create a new project. So. Uh, as you can see on the top right, I have a plus icon located there. And this is the icon where you start um, creating a new project. This is also only available if you are logged in. And by pressing on it, you will see uh, you can create a new book by uh, specifying some information. So for example, you have to uh, specify the name of the book, which style it is using, and how many start lines are located in the book. And this is then later used also for the automatic algorithms. Um, if you create a new book, this a new entry will appear here in the table. And all of those entries are again clickable. If you click on one of those entries, you will access uh, the project overview of this specific book. Um, in case uh, if you are logged in as a demo user, you only see those three entries. And the next couple of slides are all prepared using the demo screen notation. So if you want to follow follow it on the tool itself, click on the demo screen notation uh, project. So if you click on it, you will see the project overview of uh, the specific book. As you can see, we currently have three pages included. And um, on the right side, you are able to upload new pages to the book. And this is also the location where you can rename the pages in a uniform meta and also where you are able to download or export the annotations of the book. So as you can see here on the right side, or if you click on the button, you will see that we currently support um, that you can download the original images, which you have uploaded to the book. You can just download the annotations, you, or you can also export it to MonoD Plus, MEI4, or you can just download uh, the backup of the book. In addition to that, this works 
for the whole book, but also you can just select select um, a couple of pages in which you are interested, and then you can just download the annotation of those pages. Um, as you can see here, if you look closely on each of those individual pages, there are four, uh, four squares located on the top left of those pages, and those um, four squares reflect our pipeline. Our pipeline currently consists of four steps. We have first to detect the staff lines on those pages, then the layout, then the symbol, and um, the last step is detecting the text. Um, and as you can see here, those squares can be marked as green or red, depending on the state of those steps. If it is finished, it is marked as green. If it's unfinished, it is marked as red. If all of those steps are marked as green, the whole page will be uh, marked as green. And so you can use this page then for training new models. Um, now we can switch to the left side. On the left side, you can do or set up several things. For example, you can change the name of the book, you can delete the book there. And as you can see here, if you press on the permissions tab, you can configure it to permissions of the book. Um, as you can see here in the permissions tab, you can invite other users to your book. So if you want to edit a big book uh, and you want to ha have somebody help you, you can invite here other users. And this also works for groups. Um, if you, for example, have a working group, you can also invite the working group here. And also this is a location where you can publish the book, for example, to the public or just to other groups if you want to showcase the progress, for example, of your transcriptions. Um, I won't go too much into detail, but we have also an automatic workflow section here on the left side. And this workflow section is used to, um, to automatically transcribe the pages which you have selected. So for example, if you have a big book, you can select the whole book and then you can um, use the section to completely automatically transcribe the book. After that, you still will have to do some corrections. So um, yeah, if it's a still book, uh, a big book, you can um, let the process running. And after time, if it's finished, you can just enter each of the those pages and correct them using our editor tools, which we'll see later. But this is one thing you can explore on your own. And also, I've mentioned it earlier, we have our iterative training approach. And this is also the location where you can tr train new models. So for example, for this current book, we have one page completely annotated, which, which is also a big, uh, marked a screen. And currently, we, for example, if you want to retrain our model, we can currently use this one page to retrain our metal, uh, our model. And after you have retrained our model using this section, you, are, you will be able to use this model to help you in annotating the uh, other pages of your book. So this is our iterative training um, section. And also we have a comment section and the comment section is a location where you can see all of the comments of all individual pages. So if you have a lot of comments, you can see and view them all on this location in your book. Uh, similar to the project of you, you can again click on all of those pages. And if you click on one of those pages, you will enter the actual editor overlay. As you can see here, the editor overlay again consists of several elements. Um, if you follow me, um, I just uh, forget to say it, I use the next slides uh, with the Nevers 541 page. So if you want to follow it using the tool, uh, use this page. So, um, okay, again, on the left side, we have the page selection where you can use, which you can use to switch between the pages. And on the right side, you will have a configuration tab, which you can use to configure the overlay editor. Since we haven't done any annotation yet, changing anything there won't change anything in the overlay, but it will be handy. Uh, uh, it will be um, nice to use later when we correct um, the annotations of the automatic algorithms. On the top left, you can see two tools, uh, two icons, and one of the icons is or can be used to return to the actual project overview, and the other one is used to open all of our editor tools. So if you press on it, you will see all of our editor tools will unfold. And as you can see, those editor tools are currently divided into four sections. We have tools for the staff line section, tool for the layout section, tool for the symbol section, and also tools for the text section. 
which also um, reflects in our pipeline. And to mention it once, those um, groups should be used in the sequence. So before you use the tools in the layout section, you should uh, first have annotated the staff lines or finished the staff lines. Um, also, we can divide uh, those tools on the top into three different kinds of functionalities. So we have tools with general functionalities, tools with automatic functionalities, and tools with editor functionalities. So for example, tools with general functionalities are the under reader buttons located here on the top left in the toolbar. Also, we have um, uh, buttons which you can use to save the progress and also buttons which can be used to delete the annotation, which are the bin icons here on the top. And you can delete the annotations of all of the document, but you can just delete also um, some group specific annotations. But keep in mind, if you, for example, uh, delete um, the um, annotations of the layout, you will also delete the annotation of the symbols because the symbols have to be connected to uh, music regions. And if you delete the music regions and the layout um, step, you will also delete the symbols. And last but not least, um, we have a lock, lock button on each of those sections. And if you lock one of those sections, this will also uh, means that this section is finished. And if you click on it, you will also see that on the uh, left side, those red icons will uh, be marked as green. And I've mentioned it already. We have some automatic transcription tools, which you'll see also in the next slide. So um, those automatic uh, algorithms are also divided into those four groups. We have tools for the staff line detection, layout seg segmentation, symbol detection, um, for the reading order, the text recognition using Calamari, and also for assigning the syllables of the lyrics to the new automatically. And the, uh, the last kind of tools are the editor tools. And you can always notice the editor tools through an underline under the tools. And those tools are actually also the tools which you use to manually, manually notate the page or which you can use to correct errors using our automatic uh, algorithms. And since we have a lot of functionalities integrated in these tools, we have um, implemented a shortcut overview. Um, for the workshop. And as you can see, currently I have no tool on the top selected. If you press shift question mark, you will um, only see the general functionalities because I have no tool selected. If you um, have, for example, the layout, uh, if you have, for example, the first tool in the layout section selected, and um, press again shift question mark, you will see a different set of shortcuts which can be used to make the transcription process a little bit more efficient. And yeah, many of those shortcuts are quite similar. So for example, um, creating a region can be done using the mode one button. Finish creating a region can also be done using um, or pressing on the enter button. And this is similar for example for the symbols where you can also create a symbol using the mouse one button. And just the context is a little bit different. And also most of the um, times um, some um, specific uh, shortcuts are located on the bottom and yeah those are the functionalities which are um, different for each of those sections so now we can actually start with the actual transcription so if you're still this page selected you will see that we will begin with uh, detecting the staff lines and as you can see we have one tool for detecting the staff lines automatically and three tools to correct any errors in the detection. And the imagined workflow using OMMR for all is that we start using our automatic um, transcription tool, and then we use uh, other editor tools to correct any errors in them. Um, so for example, if you press on this icon, you will see that you will be asked which model you want to use. Um, and if you press on run using the default model, you will see that the staff lines will be automatically calculated. So this is, I can actually also show live on the demo. If, okay, I think it's, 
So um, I will just switch to the same page so that you can follow. Um, so our first step, I've, as I've mentioned, is detecting the staff lines. So by pressing on the staff line detection, I will be asked which model I want to use. By pressing on run, you will see that the staff lines will be detected. Um, as you can see, the staff lines are marked as blue pulley lines um, and are uh, overlaid on the actual staff lines. Now it's our job to check if there are any errors on the staff lines. Sometimes it can be quite hard to check if there are some errors on the document. So to make this process a little bit more easier, you can now use the, on the right side um, the panel and to look for errors. So as you can see, we have a an, an button which you can uh, disable and enable to show the staff lines. And this makes the process in finding any errors a little bit easier. So as you can see, for example, this, uh, there's a staff line detected uh, until the end here. And this is, well, would be an error, but um, for the melody extraction data, this actually isn't an error which you need to correct. So um, I will still, I will just leave it there. But um, if you want to correct any errors, you can uh, select the first tool here on the top left, and then you can select any of those staff lines. So you can just click on them, and then you will see the actual points which are used to render the staff lines. All of those white points are click and droppable, so you can modify the staff line. Also, by pressing um, Control, you can insert new staff lines if, for example, uh, you have to um, do a, a little bit more accurate um, correction. And yeah, also, if you have a staff line selected, you can just delete it. Um, so, as an example, if this staff line wouldn't be detected, you should uh, you have to correct it manually, and this can just be done by clicking on the staff line and following um, the actual staff line. And after that, you can press enter and you will see uh, that the staff line is created. And which uh, what you can also see is that all of the staff lines are already organized into groups. You can see a small box around the staff lines, a uh, green vertical box. And this uh, vertical box uh, signals that those four staff lines here are organized into one staff. And if there are any errors in those staff, you can use the second tool here to um, to see uh, to see the staffs. And if there are errors, you can use this tool to fix any errors here. So, for example, um, since there aren't any errors, I will just showcase the tool. You can just select a couple of staff lines, and then they will connect to one staff. Since this is an error, I will just undo this again. But you have the option. Um, that you can fix those errors too in the tool. And the last tool which we have here located in the staff line section is the split tool. The split tool can actually be used to split the staff lines into several staff lines. So for example, if you have a layout which is a little bit more difficult because it has some text between the staff line, you can use this tool, for example, to split, split the staff line into two uh, parts. And in addition to that, you can also use the tool to fix the beginning and the endings of the staff lines a little bit more efficient because as you can see, using this tool, um, the staff lines are um, corrected all at once. Instead, uh, if you use the first tool, you have to click on each of the um, staff lines um, separately and have to fix the beginnings. After we have now fixed all of the errors, we can also mark the step as finished. So. I will just do that and I will switch again to the presentation. So since I've just mentioned this all in the tool, I will just skip the slides and we can start with the second step in our transcription. The, set, uh, the second step is the layout annotation. In the layout annotation, you will try to segmentate the pages into music regions and text regions mainly. Um, for this, we have again one tool used for the automatic detection and three tools to fix any errors in the detection. And the workflow is the same. We just start with our automatic tool and then we use the other tools to correct any errors in them. Um, 
if you click on the first icon, you will see um, that we have two different algorithms which you can choose from. We have one algorithm called symbols lyrics layout and one algorithm called complex layout. And what the simple lyrics layout algorithm does, it uses the previously annotated stuff lines to divide the pages into music regions and text regions. And the complex layout does um, a little bit more segmentation. It also, in addition to the music and the lyric regions, also segmentates the, pack, uh, the, the page into paratext and drop capital regions. And I think also for new regions. If you if you click on the simple lyrics layout and press run, you will see that the page is annotated into two different regions. The green regions are the music regions and the red regions are the lyric regions. And as you can see, currently we have thorough regions supported. We have music regions, uh, which are marked as green, lyric regions, which are marked as red. In addition to that, we have drop capitals, paratext, and folder region, which also can be annotated annotated using this tool. But for the um, remaining steps, the simple detection step and the text segmentation step, we just need the music regions and the real regions. The other um, regions are just optional. But if you want, for example, to extract also the text of the paratext, you um, have to also annotate those regions using the paratext region. Okay, so this I can again show live in the tool. So if I just uh, use also the automatic, what happened there? This is one thing that shouldn't happen. So it's probably happened because I split. Or nay, I grouped the staff lines into one. So for this, I just um, run the staff lines again, and then I use. So then I use this algorithm to fix this error. And as you can see, the regions are now um, divided into the music region and the text regions, which you have seen also in the slides. And as you can see, all of those regions are again clickable. Um, similar to the staff lines, all of those symbols, uh, all of the points are displayed if you click on a region and you can just modify the region using those points. And similar to this, you can just again insert new points using the control button. In addition to that, you can change the type of those regions. You can see on the top right, we have, you can select a different set of um, regions. So if you want to change a region, you can those, uh, use those, uh, you can use uh, this panel here. And you can also uh, click uh, with your second mouse button, your right mouse button on a region that you have selected to, um, to change um, the type of region a little bit more efficient. So for example, I just um, changed it to a drop capital. Um, also, as you can see on the top right, you can also mark a um, region as reconstructed, which signals that this region isn't part of the original document, but it was um, added later on this document. So just that you know that also this option exists. And now we can actually use uh, or we have actually um, corrected those errors. So as you can see, sometimes a symbol isn't completely inside the region. So these are the errors we have to fix using our tools. So this can just be done using um, the first tool and you can just um, yeah, insert new points, for example, like this to fix those region, but you can also use our smart editor tools. We have, as you can see, two smart editor tools one of those tools is called um, Connected Component Extractor, I think. And if you click on it, you can extend existing regions using the connected components on the documents. So to show it to you, you can just draw a line from a region like this, and then it will um, automatically extend the region. In order uh, for this region to work, so those symbols have also be uh, in the binary image. If those symbols aren't in the binary image, if they are missing, for example, because the binarization method is bad, then uh, this uh, symbol, uh, this method or tool won't work. 
Um, yeah, and you, as you can see, you can just use this tool to fix those errors. Uh, let me see. Here, for example, we have to um, fix the G or the P. Um, in addition to that, we have the Lasser extractor, and the Lasser extractor is quite similar to the connected component extractor, just that you can use it a little bit more with a little bit more manual work. So you can specify the region which you want to uh, extend your original region to. So as you can see here, you can just draw a region and it will um, yeah, extend this region. So, and as you can see, you can also use it on um, other regions. So the region can overlay other regions. So, and after we have now fixed all of those errors, you can also mark this step as finished. Um, and as you can see on the left side, this step is now marked as finished. And I forgot to finish this step. And as now you can see that both of those steps are marked as green. And we can continue with our third transcription step. For this, I change again to the presentation. Um, so, the third step in our transcription is, as I've already told you, the detection of the symbols. And again, as you can see, we have one tool to automatically detect symbols, and again, current tools to correct any errors in them. And the workflow is the same. We use our detection tool to detect the symbols. And after we've detected them, we use the other editor tools to correct any errors in them. So if you press on the tool of, of the icon of the automatic transcription tool, you will again ask which model you want to use. And if you press run, you will see that the symbols will be detected. So to show this to you, um, if I press now the run button, you will see that the symbols on the document will be, will be calculated. And as you can see, nodes on the documents are marked as yellow boxes, class as blue boxes. Also, the news are already detected, and they are separated through those vertical dashed lines. If you look closely, you will also see that there is a line connecting all of those symbols, which is uh, or which um, is the reading order of those symbols. So th this line can be helpful if you have a document when, this, uh, uh, when the symbols are close together and this can help you in finding um, some errors in them. Um, in addition to that, um, you or we detect also the graphical connection between the symbols. So uh, as an example, you can see uh, a graphical connection here. And yeah, I think that's all of the things I want to mention here. So now uh, I will give you a short overview of the tools or of the symbols which you can actually insert in OMR for all. And as you can see on the top right, we you can currently insert nodes, C class, F class, flat as credentials, sharp as credentials, and natural as credentials. And nodes can have different types, which you will see on the next slide. In addition to types, which I can also show you using um, the live over view, um, if I press or select a um, symbol, they are again selectable, you can open the type here on the right side and you can um, specify the type of the node. In addition to that, um, a node can have different attributes. So a node, for example, can be a start of a new, which means there's a new new starting. And if a new new starts, it means there's a vertical dashed line before those no, uh, before those node. In addition to that, a node can also be uh, not start of a new, but it can be co uh, also not connected, which means it's part of the same new as you can see here, but it has a small gap between them. And the third option we have there is that a node can also be just connected, which means it's also part of this new, but it um, yeah it has a graphical connection between this node and its previous node, and that's all of the things or, or all of the symbols which you can currently insert in OMR for all. Um, in addition to that, if you click on one of those symbols, you can always 
add a comment to uh, those symbols. So for example, for example, with the clef here, um, you can now uh, write a comment like is uh, is it located on the staff line um, three or between staff line two or three? Because as you can see here, um, the position of this uh, clef is probably um, at least on the clef uh, wrongly detected. So as you can see here also, each symbol has two positions, a global position on the document where it, where it is located and also an um, position inside the clef. So as you can see here, on each of the symbols, or each symbol has a small plus icon in it. And this plus icon um, is the location on the clef. And actually this uh, uh, position on the clef is then later used to extract the melody um, of the music region automatically. So if there are any errors, we should fix them because if we don't fix them, this will result in an error in the melody extraction. So um, this is probably an error and we have to fix this error. If we aren't sure if this is an error, we can just write a comment here um, and come back later. Like, is it on stuff line three or between? And yeah, and this can be done for every symbol. So just that you um, know that this option also exists. And keep in mind, um, if you, not this uh, shortcut view, this shortcut view, if you press shift question mark, you will see all of the shortcuts which are uh, currently included in this editor tool. So the shortcuts can then be used to make the transcription process a little bit more efficient. After we fixed all of those errors, we can then also mark this step as finished. But before we do this, we should have a quick look if there are some more errors. Um, so for example, here, we have a symbol which is additionally uh, detected. So we have to select it and just delete it. And also here's an error which we have also um, to uh, fix. So you can just insert a new symbol here and also you have to mark this symbol as the start of a new and yeah this is the procedure of fixing um, the symbol locations of the document and here one additional um, error so oh, this is too much yeah this is the procedure of um using the tool, uh, correcting the symbols on the document. And after we fix all of the errors, we can also lock this tool and mark it as finished. And now we can already switch to the last transcription tool or the last step in our pipeline. And the last step in our pipeline is the transcription of the lyrics and the syllables. So as you can see here, uh, this time we have three automatic tools, one tool to automatically detect the reading order of the lyrics, one tool to detect the transcription of the text, and one tool to automatically detect or assign the syllables to the neums. And we have two uh, tools which can be used to uh, correct those errors. And the workflow is a little bit different here. First, we assign the reading order. After we have assigned the reading order, we correct any errors in the reading order. After that, we can use one of the options we provide to transcribe the text. And after that, we again correct the text. And uh, last but not least, we then assign the syllables of the lyric to um, the neums in the music region. So um, by pressing on the first icon, you will see that the reading order is automatically detected. I can also show this on the editor itself. So if you press on it, you will see the reading order is calculated automatically. And if there are any errors in the reading order, you can just change the reading order on the right side by swapping um, the panels here. And as you can see, I just swapped um, the first uh, lyric region with the second lyric region and you can also see uh, note the new uh, reading order 
all day here on the document. Since it's uh, false, I just undo this um, change. And the second, the second um, step would be now to annotate the text using this tool. For this, we have three different options. You can transcribe the text using the lyric paste tool. Um, you can also, uh, so if you have um, some lyrics already, um, you can just paste those lyrics in the paste tool. Um, each lyric or each, uh, yeah, each sentence should be separated by a new line. And after you insert them, you have just assigned so sentence to the lyric regions. Um, if you don't have any existence, existing re, uh, lyrics, you can just use the manual edition tool where you can use, or where you can click on each of those red regions. And if you click on one of those red regions, um, a virtual keyboard will appear. And on those virtual keyboards, you can just type the transcription of those texts. Um, and as you can see here, those transcriptions are, um, um, or the syllables are separated through dash, uh, through dashes, and each word is separated, separated through a white space. And yeah, so I already transcribed this uh, line, for example. And the third option we have is using our automatic transcription tool, uh, which is using Calamari, uh, especially for the automatic transcription using uh, the neural networks. Here, here we advised that you retrain your own models because especially um, in this stage, the, the quality of the output highly depends on the model you are using. So if you have an, if you're using model which isn't trained on those kind of notation styles so, um, in the output of the um, optical character recognition will be, or can be quite bad. And yeah, if you press this button, you will see that the, uh, that the lyrics are automatically transcribed using this tool. And now it's our, um, and now we have to fix those errors in the step if we are using this tool. So I can also show this directly in the tool. Um, you can press on the tool, uh, on the automatic algorithm tool using this icon. And if you press on it, you will see that the transcription of all of those um, lines is automatically detected. And as you can see, there are still some errors. So you should have to fix those errors. So I will just fix it for one line. No, I deleted too much, I think. And sometimes it can be quite hard to see um, to see the text because uh, the overlay is is making this process a little bit harder. So we can just use um, the configuration tab on the right side to disable, for example, in this case, the reading order and also the layout. And then you can beta bonus. And then you can fix uh, it a little bit more easier. This. Cool. So, and in case uh, you want to uh, fix the correction of every um, uh, region, you can just switch between the regions pressing the tab button. Um, for the presentation, I only fix now the third region. So we can continue with the next step. The next step is then the assignment of the syllables. Uh, for this, again, I will switch to the presentation, so I don't forget anything. So as you can see, um, I already forgot something. You can also insert a comment, a, a comment to um, each of those lyric regions. So, for example, if you aren't sure 
if it's no malice or malus, you can insert a comment and then you can come back later and fix it after you have, for example, um, discussed it with your colleagues. And the last step is the assignment of those lyrics to the syllables. Um, again, for this, we have one automatic tool and one editor tool, which can be used to do it with manually. Um, in this case, I will just show the manually tool first and after that, the automatic tool. Nope, that's the wrong window. It's old. So, um, so by pressing on this icon here on the top on the editor tool of the syllables, you will see on the right side all of the syllables, and those syllables can be used to assign them to the respective neum. You have just to select a syllable, and then you can um, assign it to the neum by just clicking on the specified neum. So, for example, you can just Conus, okay. I think I forget, forgot um, this document. So actually there's an error in the transcription I've made. So we have to um, yeah, skip this in this case, but yeah, that's, that's not my fault because I forgot it in the transcription. Um, so, and also we have one tool which does this automatically and this tool if you click on it, you will see we have actually two tools and one of those tools use the output of the optical character recognition of Calamari to assign those syllables to the correct position. So to show you this, I will just delete my uh, syllable connection so that you can see the difference using those automatic tools, uh, the wrong tool. Um, but for example, if I now press on the syllables from text, you will see um, that the syllabus will be automatically detected. And as you can see, it will also put it on the correct position since it uses the output of the optical correct recognition. And, and we have also another algorithm, and this algorithm is a little bit more straightforward. It just assigns the syllables to, um, to uh, the neums one after another. So if I use this uh, tool now, you will see that in the first line there is an error in it. So, and after we have now fixed all of those errors, um, we can also mark this page as finished. And as you can see on the left side, so then the whole page will appear in green and we can use this page to train our models with. And this is the workflow of our tool. Um, after you've now transcribed the whole page, you can return to the project overview and you can download the annotation of uh, the annotation you uh, did. Uh, since you aren't logged in, those annotations will be uh, automatically deleted or aren't saved, and um, so you can't download it on this page you currently annotated. But you can, for example, do download it for this page. And yeah, that's the pipeline of this tool. So. Now I can switch again to the presentation with one direction. And yeah, that's uh, an example of a final output using this tool. And of course, you can export it to a more common um, data structure like MEI or uh, MonoD Plus. And you can, for example, view it in MonoD to um, see the equivalent transcription um, using this um, format. Um, I've also prepared some additional slides, um, like uh, this one, where you can see the transcription times. And as you can see, we currently have a speed up using this tool of 20 to 30%, depending on the notation style it was evaluated on. And as you can see, it was compared you, uh, with Community Plus, um, another great tool to um, annotate those pages. And if you don't know, MonoD Plus, in MonoD Plus, you just directly annotate the melody and also the description of the text. So you don't have to segmentate the, um, uh, the regions and so on, but still we have a speed up of 20 to 30%.
Also, uh, during the end of my presentation, I just want to give an overview on things we are currently working on. So as you can see on the right side, um, we are currently also working on different notation styles, which we want um, to include in UMR for all, so that they, so they can also transcribe those documents. Um, our current automatic pipeline um, first detects the staff lines, and using those staff lines, we detect the layout. As you can see on this layout type, um, not all of the staff lines are drawn, and because of this, we can't use our current approach. And because of this, we are, have implemented a new approach in first detecting the text, which works really, really good. And after we detected the text, we can again then use those detected textes to, um, to divide the pages into music region and text regions. So that's one thing we are currently working on, but this isn't currently in included into UMR for all, but it will probably in the future. Another thing we are currently working on is on some improvements of the optical character recognition quality. So we want to improve the quality with two points. First of all, we want to improve the actual pipeline. So for example, uh, in the pipeline, we want to replace the binarization method, which we are currently using, and replace it with a better, better binarization method, which will also um, improve the quality of those um, of the output of the optical character recognition. And another thing uh, which we have already done, we um, implemented an post-processing algorithm, which um, uses the output of the optical correct recognition and search for um, similar documents in a database. Um, and if it finds a, a document which is matching, um, we can use the, the matching um, document to improve our optical correct recognition width. And this is possible because often, as you can see on the right side, uh, the melody and also the transcription is repeated in different sources. So as you can see here, we have one source from Bamberg and one source from CC, and the transcription and also the melody is quite similar. There are some uh, small differences, but uh, those small differences are um, still better than our current optical character recognition. So that's another thing we um, use or we want to use to improve on of the automatic quality of the optical crack recognition. And this is also already at least uh, partial, partially included into OMR for all, but not in the live, de uh, not in the live demo you're currently seeing. Um, also on this slide, you can see some future goals. So as you can have seen in the previous slides, we are working on um, notation styles with only one staff line. And in the future, we also want to support even earlier notation styles like oriental notation, as you can see in the middle, and also mensural notations, as you can see on the bottom. And that's the things we plan in the future and which we hope that we can also include into OMR for all. So um, that was, or is the end of my presentation. And here are again some links um, for the GitHub repository, the demo, of the software and also the Docker image if you want to set it up using Docker. In addition to that, I have a link to the Corpus Monotokum project. And if you um, use this link, you will see that um, the Corpus Monotokum project has already transcribed a lot of documents of chant music. So you can also check this project out if you want. And yeah, that's the end of my presentation. If you want to access uh, or have to access to a full account, you can contact me using this email. And if you have no any questions or any suggestions, you can um, yeah, ask them now. All right, so for questions, again, as usual, please either raise your hand or write it in the chat. So it seems like for now, we don't have questions.
Ah, there's one in the chat by Barbara Haykoglu. Do you work manuscript by manuscript or like how, uh, how do you work? Um, we have two pipelines. You can do manuscript for manuscript and you can use our pipeline where you can specify a number of pages and you can then run the automatic transcription using the selected pages. All right, does that answer the question? Okay, uh, we have uh, Andre de Vizic, uh, with a raised hand. Yes, hello. Uh, this may be a tiny detail, but I've noticed uh, working with the uh, online user interface that uh, I'm used to the different uh, movements, different uh, shortcuts. For instance, mm -hmm. I'm uh, in programs which I work daily with, um, for instance, MuseScore, I use for Zoom, control uh, mouse wheel, for uh, horizontal sc scroll, just mouse wheel, and for vertical scroll, uh, shift mouse wheel. It, it's, this may be a tiny detail. Uh, I, I would be interested how did you choose this uh, basic method of uh, interacting with, with the user, and if you uh, maybe consider uh, improving or uh, it. <laughs> um, yeah it's, I think it's common to just zoom with the mouse wheel but if if it um, is a, if there's a feature request that you want to zoom um, vertically and horizontally using the shift button or not the shift button you can also implement this that's not a problem I think uh, this might be just my case uh, I'm used to from different from other programs but yeah. thanks Okay, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, any any more questions for now? So in the chat again from, from Barbara, uh, what problems uh, do you run into? Um, on on the pipeline or um, or in the of the whole project. Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, so, I'm, I'm unmuted now. Uh, what I meant is, I think it's always interesting to know what, what have, when have you run into problems or difficulties in each of these operations? And what are situations in manuscripts that make you have to rethink or something like that? For example, um, uh, I'm thinking of chants that are overwritten or crossed out or notes that are added above corrections. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, um, um, to be honest, I, I'm, I haven't used the tool too much for uh, annotating pages because I'm just a developer and I'm doing the things that the musicians wa uh, want to have to be implemented. Into uh -huh. the tool. So, um, so you pass on the problems to them. <laughs> now, if there are problems, I uh, I try to fix them inside the tool, but um, uh -huh. I haven't uh, heard any of those problems yet. Okay, well, that's good to know. <laughs> if I can add to this, uh, the tool is not very opinionated on how specifically you use uh, like what editorial policies you choose for what is a single music region and what is a single lyric, lyrics region, etc. So uh, many of these problems I think can be solved with or addressed at least uh, through editorial policy. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide, okay, how am I going to use this tool if my manuscript has a bunch of erasures? I can imagine, for instance, uh, is Either, well, the simple way is just you know added comments. Uh, maybe in your music regions you just don't include the erased notes. You can delete those even if they come out of recognition. 
uh, etc. So th this is like the um, this is a part of the answer. It's not the whole answer. Yeah. The best answer is still if you have an issue, then uh, uh, if you encounter a problem, then write to the developers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from Rianet in chat. Uh, so how long does it take someone to fully annotate a folio in this way? Um, this depends if you have a model um, already which uh, works with layouts you have. If you have a, work, a model which works well, this I think takes about a couple of minutes. So, it always depends on the quality of the output of our uh, automatic algorithms. But um, if you have a simple layout, it's, it's again quicker. And if you have a difficult layout, it takes more time, of course. But it's an, a, a thing, uh, uh, a, um, a question of minutes, how many minutes you need to transcribe the document. And to add to this slightly, if you don't have a model, and you need to annotate a pretty complex page, which you'll see uh, in a few minutes. Uh, it takes about an hour to follow from scratch to, to everything. Uh, there is a raised hand by Hannah Vohova uh, Yeah, what I wanted to add. So we cannot hear you right now. Uh So this is, uh, when I say it, uh, not many notes, but a lot of text. Uh, it can change when we have a page with a melismatic charm, where we will not have so much text, but very, very many uh, notes combined in melismas and different no, uh, note groups. And I think it might take much more time to do this page, but I don't know how your experience with this is. Um, because it's another amount of information on one page then. If it is squared notation, it should also work fine. If you have a model which is trained on, same, on it. I think also the default mode which ships with OpenRF audit, it also works. We have some, I think some, some documents where we have the symbols uh, closer together. Um, and there happens uh, some errors, but um, it's still, or it's still, can, uh, it's still um, only an questions of, um, how many errors you have to fix on, on the page. So it, it should also work on um, documents where the symbols are close together. Uh, is there a follow up? Yeah, uh, no, it's another question. You um, uh, di um, uh, divided the page, the space for each new. Uh, yeah. In, on one state, but what ah. you do when you have a notation that is go that overlaps, so that we have a, a melisma that starts goes up and returns back, so we have a space reserved for several neumes. How do you deal with that? How do, can you divide it? And it could be also several syllables, so it's not only one syllable. It could be two syllables, for example. How do you deal with that? Because it's clearly divided space what you have on mm -hmm. one staff here, which is, um, I think the computer can understand it, but how to tell a computer that it's, uh, that it's um, multi-layered? Uh, um, I think this, uh, on those kind of documents, it wouldn't work yet. Again, theoretically, you have this, uh, ordering of symbols. So uh, the data structures are there for it to work, but uh, the, ed the uh, interaction tools aren't. Uh, there's a question from Martin Konvalinka. Hello, I didn't mention the mechanism of completing uh, the the parts into, into composition, into all piece. Um, you mean the different steps of the pipeline? I mean, uh, uh, you, you, I, I see a page, but don't see a, a composition. Uh, uh, 
start and end of the composition. <laughs> and the extraction of the melody of the of the of the music regions, you mean? So I'm no, sure. How... I think the 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 export in domain, for instance, or yes. this is done internally in Taita to Ava, but. And how did you divide it? Uh, what is the beginning and the end of the of the melody and so on? Uh, he means the works. Okay, this is something what Jan is later um, talking about. So it's an extension of Oma for All, and Jan has some um, stuff uh, done there. And if there's still the question after that, you can still ask Xen. Thank you. All right. Uh, it seems like there are no more questions for now. So uh, thank you, Alex, uh, for the foreshadowing. Uh, in the past few months, uh, I've added some features to OMMR for all. And uh, we will now quickly go through those. So uh, thank you, Alex for the great presentation. Uh, I'm sure there will be more questions in the discussion at the end. And now let's look at some more features. So, uh, Thank you, Martin, for your question, because it was an amazing lead into uh, what uh, my work on OMR for all has been. So it's a cool tool for entering data. The automation is great. The UI is very smooth. As like I said, it takes less than an hour to get a pretty complex folio from start to end. And it seems like it could be also a great tool for actually not just entering the data, but also presenting the data. But for this, we need a few more things. Like for instance, uh, delimiting which blocks together form a composition. We need some richer uh, metadata. And uh, uh, I keep thinking about uh, what makes digital editions different from, uh, from the print editions. And one of the basic, uh, one of the major things is that in the digital environment, uh, it's much easier to collaborate throughout uh, with, with different people, with different expertise uh, and add the knowledge gradually. So I want uh, a tool for creating digital editions to, to make this uh, smooth. So uh, there's a fork of OMR uh, for all uh, with these new features. Uh, besides uh, grouping uh, regions into works, uh, it also enables you to input uh, multiple readings for the same text. For instance, uh, you can have uh, some non-standard Latin or you can have uh, or non-standard vernacular orthography. So you want both the transliteration and the transcription, let's say in, into like Canto standardized Latin or, or into whatever is readable for the given language, or you might even want to put the Latin translation on top of vernacular text. Uh, a major feature is uh, enabling not just comments on all those objects in the score, but also discussion. Uh, and then there is a better metadata integration through uh, enabling an MEI head that you can customize for each page. So again, there is a live demo. It's at this address. Uh, I would send it. Ah, there you go. Uh, the address is in the chat for you to copy and paste. And again, you can follow the presentation there. It is also an interesting load test uh, for our server because 
we have never had so many people there at once. So uh, if it if it crashes during the presentation, uh, then uh, at least we know what to tell our IT department. So by now, I, I assume if you're interested in being on the uh, on the live uh, demo that you are at the given URL. If not, it's perfectly fine. Just follow the presentation. You can always try it later. The video will go on YouTube. So you again see the splash screen, the landing page. Uh, this time though, uh, some of the features uh, require that you are logged in. So I've created uh, a guest account for this workshop. Again, uh, the information We'll go into chat. Uh, the login is yes, and the password is also there. So I'll give you a few seconds to log in. I sincerely hope it does not crash on login. And let's continue. Uh, I didn't get your uh, password. Neither me. Uh, it's, it should be in the chat. It is not. Huh. Maybe you, I don't know, maybe you have sent it to. A, a oh, person. crap. Yeah. It's not going to everyone. Sorry. This is a little complicated because when I'm sharing the screen, I have no mouse button, uh, no mouse to control uh, the zoom. There you go. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, give it a few seconds. Okay. Cool. So again, uh, let's go to the book selection. You should see two books available. So please choose the first one, the which the one which says BAGMR demo. If you click on it. Uh, you will see that there are just two pages. So first, please open with double click the, the one which is finished, which is in green. And you will see this, which is a slightly different, or you should see this, which is a slightly different editor view than uh, what we had before. So what's new? Well, first of all, click. Uh, you can click the edit button to expand the toolbar because there are, there are also new things in there. Most importantly, you will see that there are new regions. There, there's a color which we haven't seen before, uh, which corresponds to individual works on the page. This is Martin Konvalinka's question, which was amazingly targeted. Uh, we, were, we did not talk about this beforehand, but was not the plan. Uh, so we have, uh, you, you can see that on the page, there are several different logical units, like chance, there's a psalm, uh, various antiphons for that. Uh, there is also the corresponding view control on the right. So uh, if uh, you set it to show layout, you can see that all the underlying information uh, is still there. It just if you are looking at the works, you don't see it because it would be really cool. There are new editor tools. So far, they're called like scholarly because that's the idea, scholarly digital editions. But uh, maybe we'll come up with a better. And there are some new features in some of the existing editing tools that you've seen uh, a few minutes ago. First of these, will show is uh, getting the MEI head there. It's a great structure for uh, 
holding metadata about manuscripts, about pages, it definitely should be a part of any serious uh, digital edition software. So we added it. Uh, it's that tool, the open book. And basically what it gives you is just a cut and paste uh, dialogue for inputting your, your MEI head there. Uh, it's, it's not very sophisticated, but it doesn't have to. So uh, unless you have an uh, MEI head lying around, I suppose we can uh, move on. The big thing are those works. Like I said, these, the work is a group of technically within the data structure there, a group uh, of blocks that make up a meaningful unit of, of the content of the source is one work. Uh, those are containers or natural containers for a lot of metadata. And they also form the units of let's say musical performance of or units of liturgical use. So we can look at what's in, hidden inside each of the works. You can select the work editor tool, which is the wrench up there. Then just click a work. And this comes up, which is the work overlay. And this contains, aside from uh, the uh, dynamically generated uh, melody, uh, also a bunch of the other features that I will be presenting. <laughs> Almost all of them. Uh, there are multiple versions of, uh, of text reading available for each work, if you put them in and how you put them in we will see later. And uh, you have this um, social aspect of digital editions. I know it's a, it's a word with horrible connotations, but uh, within uh, within the musicological community, I think it's a uh, it's a good thing. So, how do we put multiple readings in for the same text? Like I said, the use case for this is maybe transliteration versus some standardized transcription translations, and also uh, multiple. Each of the readings gives you an option to do the text underlay a little differently if, for some reason, you need that. So uh, this is uh, one of the things which is available in, uh, as a new feature within existing tools. So I can click the pencil to, to open the rest of the toolbar and unlock uh, the text processing, which is the rightmost, uh, rightmost group. Uh, we've had to collapse the locked ones uh, because otherwise the toolbar would be really cluttered. So if you unlock text processing, and uh, use the text editing tool. You should see this also, please now go to the next page because uh, so far we've been at a page where you know everything is already added, uh, but uh, in order to try adding it, you have to go to the incomplete version. So once you're on the page underscore work in progress, uh, select the second line of lyrics because the first line is already done. It's, if you select the second line, uh, you should see this, which is a little different from uh, what Alex was showing as the text editing tool. Uh, we have this extra option for adding a reading. Uh, so let's call it transcription. Click the plus to add the reading. And it should look like this. Again, I will send you the text for pasting there in the chat uh, because uh, this is actually a Czech manuscript. Uh, just a second. Ah, I have to type it in. Uh, oops, sorry. This working without the mouse is complete. Mm. 
this uh, actually is uh, one of the first or the first manuscript uh, with the translations of liturgical texts into vernacular. It's one of the basic uh, sources that our project is, is using. And this whole thing came up because I'm supposed to create a digital edition for this, uh, for this manuscript. So all these complex features are things that I decided are needed. Okay, that is almost ready. I'm sorry, I have to do it like this. Okay. You have the text in the chat with the uh, with the syllables, uh, with the syllables uh, marked. Uh, also, the this transcription is uh, this transcription of Czech is something that uh, has a certain. Uh, rules let's say since a few decades ago somebody came up with ways to standardize early Czech orthography which is pretty wild and we are very thankful to our collaborator from the institute for czech language uh, Petr Nedli, who actually knows all these rules and uh, and was able to provide it for us so we have now added a different reading of the text for the second line of lyrics. And you can just press escape and go back to the page. Uh, in OMMR for all, uh, most, the vast majority of things is like, you don't have to confirm things. They just happen as you type. The only thing you need to worry about is saving the page on the server. And also it auto saves every single like five minutes. So now, you can just press escape and go back to the page. Now we add the text underlay for this new reading. It works really similar. You just have to select this reading uh, on the top right and in the menu called available readings. This is new. This wasn't there before when we were aligning syllabus manually. Uh, you can see which uh, which syllables have already been aligned. That's the first line. That's the one I did bef uh, beforehand already. And uh, then there are the syllables that we have to align now for the reading of the second line that we just added. Those are in dark red. The ones in gray are uh, just lines for which uh, this reading called transcription is not available yet. So you cannot assign those. All right. We zoom in, we add, uh, just click it in somehow. You know, for now, we don't really care if it's done correctly. Uh, it looks bad because uh, of some resolution issues. The underlying image has a relatively low DPI. Uh, we will fix that briefly. It's already you know, an issue on GitHub. So, Give you some time to just add uh, the syllables uh, to their respective names. All right. Uh, and now we have all the information that we need uh, to actually create this work the container. So uh, we click this tool for grouping blocks of works. You should get this view. And if you just drag the mouse, you will see the rectangle appears and all the regions that intersect this rectangle will be grouped into a new work once you let go of the mouse. Um, don't worry that nothing happens. It's just something that I didn't have time to implement properly yet. But if you go to the works editor, uh, you will see, or you should see, that there is now a new work there. Uh, can anybody uh, who is actually following uh, in the live demo confirm that this works? Oh, 
opacity. Ah, cool. And the most worked, but I missed something. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, can can we go on? This, do you see that there is now a, a work object on the page? Okay. Uh, Hopefully there is. And if it doesn't work, uh, please let me know either by email in the chat or uh, file an issue on GitHub, whichever you prefer. All right. We should have this new word there. If you click it, you will see this. Um, um, for me, it works. So just to let you know. Uh, thanks. Uh, you should uh, see this, uh, for now it's an auto-generated um, work overlay. Uh, you see that the title of the work on the top line isn't really the best, uh, but otherwise uh, the, you see the transcription reading there, which is available for the entire work. Uh, we want, we have to edit the title and add some metadata. So click on the metadata tab. And let's change that title. Uh, oops. Again, I have to write to, or just call it in Latin. Right? It's Yuda at Prison. So we can paste that in. Uh, we can also add a Cantus ID. This one I remember by now, it's 003511. You can click the plus button to add the given metadata field. You can add whatever metadata you want as the, it's just you know text key and text value. So nothing structured yet. If you want to add a link, like for instance, the closest concordance uh, with respect to melody, uh, you just paste, you can just paste the link there. Uh, this one, uh, uh, this one will not show up anyway. So, yeah, but slowing things down. Uh, but anything you want can go there as long as it's text and it shows up as text for now. If you go back to overview, though, you see that some of those uh, metadata fields are privileged uh, uh, that they are processed in the tool. So Cantus ID actually translates into a URL into Cantus index. And the plan is to get this kind of uh, linking uh, done for more metadata fields. And for instance, for uh, linking to the different set database or so, uh, or other databases. Uh, the idea is that uh, the, the digital edition here should not try to you know, reinvent the wheel. If somebody has already done the work, uh, then definitely we should link to it. Uh, Martha has a question. Yes, uh, hi, I fall, I fall behind, but I am up to speed now. Uh, one thing, when I enter the Cantus ID in the metadata, in the metadata part, when I go to overview, I don't see that that uh, that heading do you have there, Cantus ID? Okay. Uh, and the link. Let's go back. Uh, do you use exactly the form? Uh, okay, I see that I didn't use a capital yeah. I. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah. 
one of the issues that the tool currently has is so it's that the documentation is, is rather lacking. Uh, this this will be addressed uh, again in, in the near future, also based on this kind of feedback. So thank you, Martha. No, uh, I see it. It's fine. Thanks. Cool. Cool. So we have created the basic uh, metadata for the work. Uh, the clickable renderings of links will, will happen later. And uh, we now get to this um, collaborative aspect or the place. It's already a collaborative tool in the sense that multiple users can work uh, on the same project. But this is uh, yet another more direct uh, uh, form of collaboration. Uh, we can discuss things. So as Alex has shown, you can add a comment uh, to any object on the page pretty much. And you can not only add comments, you can also now react to comments that uh, other people might have added. Uh, this can uh, be used, for instance, like a convenient notebook uh, when you run into problems, like for instance, this clef where it wasn't, um, it wasn't entirely clear maybe where it belongs, uh, then you can just mark it in the comments and maybe somebody comes later and says, ah, you know, this problem, it, it's not, uh, this is how it works. Uh, basically it enables you to make your the editorial thought process accessible uh, very directly in relation uh, to the source material uh, that you have. And hopefully this will uh, make it easy uh, to exchange expertise uh, very quickly and in a very lightweight fashion, like in, in much smaller chunks than uh, in publications, but at the same time anchored to the source material already. So if you don't have to like link your email, uh, uh, copy stuff that somebody sent you in an email, you don't have to copy there if you give that person uh, access uh, to the ambition that you're creating. So how does it work? You select the discussion tab and you can create a new thread. So far there are no comments for this work or first because we just started, right? And uh, you can write in whatever you want, you know, not to manipulate you or anything. Uh, this is one of the places where you have to uh, actually click the save button uh, to have the text saved uh, to the page. Uh, then of course you have to save the whole thing uh, to upload it to the server, but please don't do that now because I have no idea what happens if uh, 20 people uh, logged in as the same user save the same page at once. Um, this is a situation that you know in, in real world use uh, wouldn't really happen. It only happens in tutorials such as this. So please, please don't click the floppy disk button. Uh, it's risky. But we save the comment. And uh, you can also read and participate in all the discussions on the page, not just in relation to specific works, because so far we've seen this as part of the work overlay. But there are, uh, like I said, uh, there may be comments for anything. Really. So uh, click uh, the discussion tool and go back uh, to the first page because of course I've prepared already some comments there. Uh, those uh, red icons have now become clickable when this discussion tool is selected. If you cannot see them, there, there is some issue with the angular rendering. Sometimes they don't get rendered to the right positions right away. So uh, you can try moving the page around a bit or, or zoom it or something and it forces uh, the JavaScript framework to, to redraw everything. Uh, if you click uh, on the comment icon, uh, you will see this. So you can uh, click to unroll the threads. You see the beginning of the text there already. Uh, the author is none because uh, we have to improve 
the user model to actually remember the username in browser. It's only used so far for, for login language. But again, it's, it's work in progress, all of this is. So if you click this, the, the thread will unroll. You can unroll the other comment as well. Uh, to edit a comment, uh, just uh, click on its text, click on its text and those buttons will appear or should appear. Uh, then click edit and then you can change things. If you click reply, then create a reply. It, it works just like any internet forum. Uh, hopefully uh, there will be also a better text editor to go with that so that you can actually add links inside. Uh, again, working for this. So for now, that's what we have uh, on the way to making Ornimar for all not just a really good data entry tool, but also to make it uh, a tool for collaborating on, on creating very rich digital editions. Uh, digital editions where uh, you start from the source, but you get all sorts of context through links uh, to various uh, other musicological databases and tools. And uh, for now, this is it, but of course, uh, there is a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, definitely, there should be. Um, uh, the links should be handled better and hopefully we can integrate bibliographies there somehow so that you can not only write URLs in but you can also link to papers uh, in Mendeley, in Zotero, uh, in whatever you use for bibliography management. Uh, you can export MEI and now you can also export the MEI head, but uh, still this isn't supported as to, to the extent to which it, uh, it would be preferable. Uh, also it exports MEI uh, as far as you know in, in modern notation. So the option to export it as NUMS as well uh, needs to be added. Um, you can uh, paste in your custom MEI head, but it's not really integrated with what's going on on the page. So uh, at least the, the, for some things you cannot integrate it, right? For stuff like funding agency or, or who's writing this. But, uh, but you can definitely at least maintain the work list and the MEI head based on the, pay, uh, the works that you add on the page. Uh, and this should also work on import. Uh, and then uh, there are larger features uh, with respect to notation, such as support for uh, rhythm size notation. Alex was already talking about uh, adding support for mensural notation, but there are, is also, uh, for instance, a Cantus Fractus repertoire, where you get uh, notes with stems and you get brevis and longa, uh, but uh, it's not exactly uh, mensural. Uh, there can, of course, be better user management. For instance, you can grant some, you should be able to grant somebody just comment rights and uh, without granting them uh, the rights to edit the, the underlying uh, regions and symbols, etc. Uh, enabling institutional sign ons, you know, all, all this user stuff. Uh, databases could be integrated better so instead of just giving you a link to campus index and uh, therefore a way to go there for further work. Uh, some of the metadata could be acquired automatically from, from campus index uh, or from the campus uh, network databases through the same JSON interface that campus index is using to, uh, to link to those databases. Uh, also, it would be nice if uh, you could upload to these databases from ONR for all. And uh, of course, uh, this would make a good job in Rodan. Uh, if, if we could Rodanize this and the, uh, thus uh, get all the power of, of the SIMSA uh, OMR pipeline uh, behind, uh, behind ONR for all, that would make a 
really powerful combination. Uh, triple IF support is needed, search inbox is needed. Uh, there are many things, but as I'm listing all these ideas, uh, ooh, documentation is needed. That's most more sorely needed. But uh, why I'm listing all these ideas is uh, that I'm trying to get you thinking about what you would like from such a tool. Your feedback and ideas, and potentially if you're a coder and you're interested, then of course uh, your software efforts uh, are, are most appreciated. Everything stays open source. And uh, with this, uh, I will I will be very happy to hear what you have to say about online. And Alex uh, will also keep taking questions. Uh, and actually, uh, let's open uh, the discussion also, uh, let's say in comparison uh, to Rodan and uh, just Martha is here still, I think, yes? Yes. Uh, so uh, whatever questions you might have also about uh, the entire contents of this workshop, uh, now would be the time. So thank you and ask away. I have to drink some water before I talk any further. All right, we have some raised hands and something in the chat. Um, so uh, we have a question in chat from uh, Frank Kupep. If the intended workflow uh, is to edit metadata simultaneously as the actual transcription, but these can be two separate steps. Uh, Alex, do you want to take this? Um, yeah, we use Ocopus just for the organization. Oh, I meant the uh, previous one. The previous uh, one. Okay. Um. Maybe I can comment on it. Uh, as is it, uh, you have the in your tool, you can edit metadata to the transcription, and uh, I I wonder about the workflow whether uh, that the same person who makes the transcription also edits the metadata simultaneous because in Corpus Monodicum these two steps are separated. I am not a musician, therefore I ask the question uh, whether this is a, a good workflow to have both steps separated or to do it in one step, uh, whether it is more efficient uh, this way or the other way. Um, I would say again, the tool doesn't care it's a matter of policy. Uh, I would suggest that uh, this, it might be productive to keep this separate, especially if you are like training students to transcribe the pages. Uh, but again, if already you are the expert uh, transcribing the page or correcting automatic transcriptions, then you can add the metadata as you go. So both workflows are supported. In general, especially if you are um, subcontracting, you know, the, the work on transcribing the, the pages themselves, uh, then it would be a good idea to, uh, to separate the two. Okay, I understand. But if you are an expert on both things, then it's more uh, efficient to, to do them simultaneously. Yeah, and it also depends on your personal preference, I think. Mm -hmm. The tool remembers what you do. You can 
first do transcriptions and then go back and add metadata. I would personally try to complete each page before moving on to the next one, just because I like knowing that I don't have to go back, but it's, it's really up to you. Thank you. So we arrange with Jan that from now I will take over the discussion, um, um, well, reading the discussion so that he can uh, have some rest. So are there any comments or questions? And again, as Jan said, uh, it should be, it could be um, questions um, for today or yesterday or Wednesday. Okay, we have. You can, ah, we have a question from Martha. I have a, I, Martha asks, I have one question, maybe I missed this. If you are using Calamari for automatic OCR, what are you using uh, OEC uh, Ocropus for, in which step? Uh, so okay. it's a question to Jan, I suppose. Uh, to Alex. Uh, to me. Oh, that's um, right, sorry. Uh, so, Ocropus is just used for the branding station, but as I mentioned it in the slides, in the future, we want to exchange Ocropus because we aren't that happy with the results of the uh, binarization step. Ocropus has an um, has an uh, binarization message which is um, specified for those kind of historical music documents. So we use this as a base for our um, binarization method. Perfect. Thank you. Martha, do you have a follow-up question? Because you, oh, no, no. But Stefan Morant has a question, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would like to ask if you perhaps could comment or uh, compare the both approaches we heard now, the last two days from the Roden and SIMSA project and today from the OMR for all. So the different approaches, advantages, maybe Martha is still there and um, each year or not, but <laughs> uh, it would be interesting to hear what you think about both of them, or uh, you just mentioned they could be combined, for example, or that would be interesting. Thank you. Uh, should I start? Yes, please. please. <laughs> uh, so that point that Jan mentioned, yes, it approaches could be combined. Um, so the whole architecture of Rodan is basically, um, you have different jobs that you interconnect, but these jobs are basically software that is outside sometimes that it has been developed by the lab or by other people. And you basically do kind of a wrapper around that so that it can be used within Rodan. So, that's a good point from Jan that uh, maybe some of the tools that are being presented in OMMR for all can be also wrapped into, you can prepare a wrapper for that and use them in Rodan. Um, there are other um, symbol recognition processes that are very good that have been developed by other people. Those can also be included into, into Rodan by preparing a wrapper. Uh, for the most part, because I, I had a meeting before, so I came a little bit late, and so I'm sad that I couldn't hear the whole presentation from the beginning. Um, but it seems like the general, uh, like the general steps from both uh, tools are pretty similar. Um, also, uh, I I heard when. Sorry, my computer was making sounds. I heard when uh, Alexander mentioned the problem of, I, I took a screenshot just to remember, of uh, if you have unseen notation styles or new books, you have to prepare training data. That's also true in, in Rodan. I kind of mentioned it implicitly, but I didn't explicitly mention it. Uh, if you are going to work with a new manuscript, the old models one of another manuscript that is completely different won't work on that one. You need also to prepare training data. So the approaches are, is, the steps are similar. Um, one of the difference might be, for example, um, the way that you detect, uh, how do you call it? The, basically the, the, symbol, the symbol regions, um, you know, MMR for all and in the job for Rodan for that is very different. Uh, we do not do binarization at all. We have a, an approach developed by Jorge Calvo Zaragoza that Ichiro mentioned about document segmentation. And that happens first. So we divide the document into music symbol layers, text layer by using that pixel tool that I show you where you kind of 
label the pixels, and then uh, you train models to figure out what is the music symbol there. So it doesn't use the um, looking at the staff lines approach to detect the symbols. But as Alexander mentioned, that is something that they are going to change for adapting to other uh, notations that don't have staff lines like a diastematic notation. And the other thing that I saw that was a bit different. Also, we are going to change from Acropus to Calamari for doing OCR. So even that is uh, very similar. What else? Uh, mostly the symbol recognition part is different. And well, now I see this uh, great job that Jan is doing uh, for actually uh, detecting the, the works and doing more like uh, scholarly editions. Uh, that's also different. And the output of MEI. Uh, right now, it seems that OMMR for all is outputting MEI uh, in common music notation for representing the NUMS. And we are outputting MEI in a uh, NUM notation. So both of them are useful, but they are outputting different things. Um, but I, I guess that we could adapt each job to do the other one. So, so those are the differences that I noticed. Uh, I don't know, maybe Alexander or Jan notice another another couple of things. Uh, Alex, do you want? Um, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I would also say that OMR for all is a little bit more specific. So um, in Rodan, I think you can also do many other jobs, not only specific to the music, so, uh, but you can also use it, for example, for um, uh, detecting, um, let's say, something about uh, medical things and um, yeah, it, it's um, it's it's not it's more generalized. It's not that specific like OMR for all, which is bit specialized in this music kind of things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is I would say this is um, one major difference that uh, actually Rodan itself is the name for the the software that puts and uh, puts those workflows together and manages them and makes it even possible to combine so many tools into uh, repeatable, uh, shareable workflows. That's a huge difference be because in OMMR for all, um, you have this one purpose towards which uh, you get, it's not really a monolithic application because you have a client side and a server side and on the server, you have those recognition apps running. You could do this modularly, you could swipe out the models, etc. So it's not entirely a monolith, but it's it has like this one clear mission. Uh, the SIMSA pipeline is designed with much larger scale in mind. Uh, I would say, yeah, like theoretically, you could do a lot of um, intense processing with Rodan, uh, with, with OMR for all. But if you have thousands and thousands of pages, uh, I, would, uh, I would first explore Rodan. On the other hand, if you have a complicated manuscript that you're really interested in and you want more of a, let's say, close reading approach rather than distant reading of a bunch of stuff, then, then it would, I think, at this point make sense uh, to uh, to use OMR for all, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you won't have to make that choice at some point uh, in the future. That OMR for all, because like I said, Rodan is this whole framework for combining things, including interactive editors, like you saw Neon. Right. So uh, OMR could be one of those interactive things that Rodan. Uh, enables you to integrate into larger workflows. Okay. That's how I see it for now. Okay, so we have uh, several answers, reactions, some more. We certainly still have a couple of minutes. We are now, we completed now the time, we reserved two hours, but still, if there are any questions, please go forward, ask or comments suggestions for sure stay in contact with us and uh, Jan will as uh, again he will process a YouTube recording and we will be posting it our website uh, very 
soon and you can share it among your colleagues and we would be very grateful. I think everybody would be grateful for um, reactions, suggestions. Okay. Uh, I don't know about the others. I can definitely stay a little longer mm -hmm. if, if, you, if anybody wants to discuss something, if anybody wants to discuss something more specific, perhaps applicability to a certain use case that you might have, etc. So uh, we won't end. Is, we don't have any to. questions. So I think that we can just call the official part and thank again both of all contributors for all three days and both contributors of today. So thank you very much, all of you. Thank you also very much for everybody who attended from your like, interest, professional or whatever. And uh, as we announced already yesterday, if you want to have a chat, short chat, uh, just stay with us and for a small round so that we can communicate before we disappear again in our closed homes um, as we are not permitted to do socializing in life. <laughs> so I say goodbye officially and say hello unofficially now. <laughs> and we stop the recording.